So again, how do we solve the problem of keeping rule number one, which is making sure that everything is well declared before I start using it, which makes me want to put all of my code all together in one file, so that I'm sure that everything is well declared and defined before I start using it. And at the same time, we have rule number two, which tells us not to put everything together, but rather separate everything into different files, because of the rules of object-oriented programming, which makes me suspect that if everything is going to be spread out in different other files, maybe I'm going to be in some sort of weird situation that by the time I want to use some class, it's not going to be well declared at that point, because it's declared somewhere else in some other separated file. To solve this, we're going to have a peek at a little bit of how the compiler works, and how while the compiler is very strict about making sure that you declare everything before you start using it, it also allows us certain ways how we can have everything separated into different files so that we can comply with the rules of object-oriented programming. First, let's start with rule number two about object-oriented programming and create our class separated into different files. We're going to have the declaration of this class, soldier, put in a header file, which usually finishes with .h. Some programmers like to have their header files finish with .hpp just as much as the source file finishes with .cpp. It's also a good programming practice to name this file a name that's relevant to whatever we're going to be declaring in this header. So if this is going to be the declaration of the soldier class, it's a good idea to call this header file soldier.h or .hpp. Now we go ahead and declare the soldier class inside of this header. This class at this point isn't exactly very elaborate. I just made it very short and sweet for demonstration purposes. Of course, your classes are going to be much bigger in real projects. But for now, we're just declaring the soldier class and giving it the declaration of the constructor and the destructor, and that's it. Now we're going to go ahead to a different file, soldier.cpp, and type up the definition of the soldier class. As you can see here, I'm defining the soldier constructor and the soldier destructor right over here. And of course, as your projects get bigger, you're going to be declaring and defining many different classes and of course separating their declaration and their definition into separate files. So at the end of the day, we got a whole bunch of header files and a whole bunch of source files, .cpp files, when we're finished coding up our program. Now we are ready to compile. Let's see what happens. The first thing you should know is that the compiler only compiles source files, files that finish with .cpp, which are in your project. Header files, files that finish with .h and .hpp, are not compiled by the compiler. In that case, let's go inside our source files, our .cpp files, and think in the mind of our compiler. Here is our soldier.cpp file, where we typed up the definition of the soldier class. As the compiler starts reading over here and it sees soldier and two columns and soldier again, the compiler will stop short and say, wait a minute, what's soldier? I never heard about soldier. We all know the answer to this already, and this is the first part of the solution of our big problem. All we need to do is include the header at the very beginning of this source file. Right here, we've just solved a, solved a big part of our problem. On the one hand, we succeeded in separating the declaration of a class from the definition of the class, and yet we found a solution to make the connection, to bring them both together so that we have the declaration of something before we start using it, before we start defining it. By including the soldier header file, the soldier class gets declared so that we can go ahead and start talking about soldier and the compiler will already have a clue about what soldier means. So even though, as we said, the compiler does not compile .h and .hpp files, it only compiles source files, .cpp files, still the compiler will listen to you if you ask it to include a header file and it will consider it as if you have, ty you have typed up that header file inside of the source file, as we will learn a little bit later. So now the soldier source file includes the soldier header file and they both get compiled together. 
Now let's say that our compiler finished compiling soldier.cpp and moves on to start compiling our main cpp file, which in this case over here is called tutorial1.cpp. In my program now, I'm going to try to create an instance of the class soldier and call him John. Thinking in the mind of the compiler though, we start reading the code right over here and as soon as we hit the word soldier, we start wondering, hey, wait a second, what is soldier? We never declared what is soldier. Now you may think, hey, wait a second, we did declare what is soldier in this header class, in this header file right over here. We even included the header file into this other file, which the compiler already compiled, so everything is taken care of. Well, the interesting thing is that the compiler treats every single source file as its own different entity. Every source file with whatever header files it includes, as soon as the compiler finished compiling it, we start all over again at the new source file as if we didn't see anything else before. Every single source file is treated like a totally different world, which is totally unaware of anything that went on in any other source file. Oh no, does that mean that I need to include the soldier header file again just so I can use it in tutorial1.cpp? Yep, that's exactly right. In any other source file that you want to be using, a class that is declared elsewhere, you need to include the header file of the declaration of that class. Um, so wait a minute, that's just a declaration. Do we need to have also the definition all over again so that we can use it in the world of tutorial1.cpp? That would really be a waste. We already declared and defined the soldier class in these other two files. But now, because we found out that the compiler treats every single source file as its own entity, which by the way is called a translation unit, so just because right now we're moving to a different translation unit, a different source file with its own header files, now we need to start all over again and declare and define the soldier class? Well, not exactly. All you need to have is the declaration of the soldier class. And the compiler will behave like we explained before, that if you at least declared something, even though you didn't define it yet, the compiler will hold himself back and have patience, he will allow you to start using that function, and it'll wait for the day that it'll bump into the definition of that class or function or whatever it is. So it comes out pretty interesting that the soldier.h file gets included twice into two different translation units. First it's included over here for this source file, for this .cpp file, because before we could start implementing the definition of the soldier class we need to include and declare what is a soldier class. Then we go ahead and include it again in this other translation unit, in this other source file, only for the purposes of beginning to use the class, and the compiler will allow us to do that because it's already declared, the only thing is that it needs to be defined and the compiler will wait until it comes across the definition of the soldier class. Again, every source file is its own separate world. What this means is like, for example, we in the source file of tutorial1.cpp, we included iostream, like you see right over here, so that we can print stuff out to the screen using standard cout. What if we would want the soldier class, in its definition, of course, to be printing stuff out to the screen as well, to make use of standard cout to print things out? Well, in that case, you will need to include iostream once again for the soldier.cpp file. And again, it would not be enough the fact that you included it already in some other translation unit, because each source file is a separate world that gets compiled totally separately from any other source files. If any source file wants to use, wants to make use of anything, it has to start all over again to include anything any header files and declaration that it needs in order to make use of different classes and objects. Each source file is a separate entity which must make sure to include all of its necessary declarations and headers in order to be able to mention any of their stuff inside of the source file.
Each one of these is a totally separate translation unit for itself.